three, two, one. It's alive! The whole team is confident. Win the trophy, exactly. It's always going to be the thing that you weren't working on. Of course, that's the thing that breaks. We don't know what happened. It, it just gets moody. What is it about Rube Goldberg machines that turns mild-mannered engineers into mad scientists? <laughs> Perhaps we should start at the beginning. My name's Jennifer George. I'm Rube Goldberg's granddaughter. Uh, Rube Goldberg was a cartoonist uh, who had a 70-year-long career. Um, and he is actually best known for his crazy contraptions that took a very simple task and made it very overly complicated. He never built them. They were only meant to make you laugh. And so I find it pretty ironic that we have these giant events um, where we are all kind of really determined to make these machines work. The competition actually started between two rival fraternities at Purdue University in the 1950s. Um, when those rivals graduated, the competitions disappeared, uh, the trophies went into the attics of the fraternity houses, and uh, in the late 80s, um, the trophies were unearthed. Purdue began hosting Rube Goldberg contests, inviting schools from all across the country to compete for the most reliable and most whimsical machine. Thirty years later, the official Rube Goldberg Machine Contest is now a global enterprise with hundreds of teams of all ages and all stripes. Of course, with history on their side, there is one school that always seems to shine. Purdue has won the last couple years in a row. They're very tough to beat. They've got you know, great engineers, as you know, so their, their mechanics are sound. And then they seem to have a really great grasp of who Rube was as a humorist, a satirist. And the best machines go on to have you know, a viral life online and uh, get on to late night talk shows. The Purdue University Rube Goldberg team. That's quite a reputation to live up to. And this year, there are not one, but three Purdue teams hoping to carry that torch. A-M-E-T, A-S-M-E, and PSPE. You might recognize that last one from their Jimmy Kimmel appearance, and their 30 years worth of trophies. But no resting on one's laurels here. There's a new complicated machine to be built to complete a very simple task. And this year's task for the national competition is to open an umbrella. We settled on kind of a unique way of incorporating it by putting on an ice cream truck in a park and kind of go with a walk through down memory lane, um, old kind of 50s sort of feel, where because we have a general store and a diner and then the park. We have a vine that grows up a lamp post and a bird that swings across and it's really cool the final, I really like our final step where the hand touches the umbrella and the umbrella comes up. I'm kind of redesigning the rain boot module right now because before we had them just stepping but it was really difficult for our motor to pull it because of how much friction there was. Uh, so we've changed it to a wheel format, so I'm building that right now. We try to spend as little money as possible because our team's been around since about the 80s. We keep most of the stuff from each year. And if anyone sees anything that anyone's throwing out or if they have some old kitchen items, we can always think of uses for things because that's how we think. Over at AMET, they're working in a cramped basement. And thus, they've chosen a much simpler approach. Just one level, six feet by six feet, with no lights or other electrical aids, just pure mechanics and physics. The theme here is basically um, an outdoorsman, but today is just his most unlucky day. So the boulder rolls down the mountain and knocks the truck all the way down the ramp, it goes down the zip line and gets caught by something in the tree here. The centerpiece of the machine is a tether ball that takes forever to unwind building the suspense every time they run the machine. As we watch the tetherball go around, it's just so suspenseful. We don't know whether it's going to work or whether it's not going to work. <laughs> call that basically his, his call dropping because he's, he's calling for help. We basically build it from scratch, so if anything, it teaches us how to problem solve and, and just how to overcome like adversity. Like when things don't work, we have to figure out how to rebuild it or figure out which, what parts to use to make it run more efficiently. But gets people um, used to working with the team and it, it uh, just brings a group together and we all work towards one task.
Meanwhile, ASME has chosen a more dramatic approach. <laughs> I am Dr. Silverberg, the mad scientist who owns this laboratory. The mad chemistry releases enough gas to fill the balloon. To raise the flap, the snake runs to the telephone and removes the support from the lever arm, which then releases the string holding the umbrella in place and allowing lightning to strike, bringing Rubenstein to life. I spent some time last night honing, you know, the right words. So instead of saying, we've got a bunch of plastic dinosaurs, we have a miniature Jurassic Park. But don't let their dramatics fool you. These mechanical engineers have incorporated nearly every type of physics possible, from hydraulics and chemistry to electric motors and even acoustic vibration. The really cool one is the vibrations from the music. There's a speaker underneath, right underneath, the, underneath the Purdue P we have right here, slowly vibrate the pyramid until it goes down and releases the marble down this track. Actually being able to make a step out of that and it staying consistent, that's really, really cool to see. As for me, I put my faith in science. <laughs> Will it be enough? We've come to Columbus, Ohio to find out. It's the Rube Goldberg Machine Contest National Finals, where the three Purdue teams will compete against other schools from across the country. The first attempt goes to reigning champions PSPE, and with big crowds gathered, they seem to be the early favorite. That's our goal, is to have people watch our machines, so we're really excited to see everyone enjoy it and get excited, especially the kids, they love it. We are feeling good and we are excited. But near the beginning of their first run, an anxious moment. The cup fills up, but doesn't go anywhere. With only two minutes allowed for the entire run, Rebecca has a decision to make. Wait for the cup to move, or intervene and spoil a perfect run. Rebecca chooses to intervene, and the rest of the machine operates without a hitch. Now comes another catch, repeatability. The team has eight minutes to completely reset the machine. Fill up the water bottles, rearm mouse traps, unbreak what has been broken, and duplicate that exact same run. With 74 items to cover and the clock ticking, the team sticks to a checklist to make sure everything is perfect. On run number two, however, the water spout acts up yet again. Plus, there's unexpected trouble in the diner. One touch on the first run, two on the second. It's been working this whole time and all of a sudden it didn't work, so that's yeah. frustrating. But that's what happens when in these competition runs, when you get down to it. It's always going to be the thing that you weren't working on. Of course, that's the thing that breaks. Next up, it's the mad scientists of ASME. Science. Hopes are high from their charismatic presenter. But just a few seconds in, disaster. A rubber band breaks, stranding their cable car. Even worse, Andrew can't fix it with his mad scientist gloves on. And then, later in the machine, even the final umbrella opening step betrays them. This has broken in many ways. It has not broken in that way right. until today. Yep. They go to work on the reset, hoping the second run will be better. And it is, executing perfectly with no human interventions, except this platform oh down here, Every that got tipped early. And for some reason, this umbrella took like a few, like 20 seconds to unravel, which actually <laughs> let the rest of the steps go before the umbrella went. I know, isn't it great? <laughs> Finally, AMET prepares their all-mechanical entry. The action is kicked off by a foot pedal, which operates a can of compressed air. The tether ball holds everyone in suspense. The call is dropped and the umbrella opens. A perfect run. If they can reset successfully and pull off another perfect run, they'll be the only team to do so in the entire competition. They decide to go for it all with one final flourish. They offer some kids in the audience the chance to start the machine themselves. 
However, the gesture backfires. When they press the pedal, the whole platform shakes, causing one of the later steps to trigger early, and the umbrella opens way before it should. First one went great. Second run, just too much, too much force on the on the whole piece itself, and it just knocked over one piece. And it's competition, and things happen. So I'm just glad we got to come out here and compete. There's reason to be sad about the mishap, but then the judges make a special point of encouraging the team. You have a very well-designed machine here. Thank you. This is incredible. That you can see everything and it's laid out. It's it's understated, but it's powerful. Thank it's you. nice when they're slower. Mm -hmm. The action is slower. Builds the tension. You have to. A lot of times you can't see it. This was very visual. Thank you. When it comes to the awards platform, it's clear the judges are still impressed. Purdue AMET wins the award for Best Designed Machine. And while PSPE didn't have a perfect run, their ingenuity was enough to win second place in the nationwide competition. Thousands of hours of work, designing, building, painting, testing, and retesting has now come to an end. And what have we learned? How does a crazy competition like Rube Goldberg actually benefit these Purdue engineering students? The problem solvers of tomorrow are the Rube Goldberg machine contestants today because they really are thinking outside of the box. And sometimes you have to overcomplicate something in order to know how to simplify it. Then there's teamwork. This is a way to start working with another person because chances are you're going to get into the real working world and you're going to have to like consider what other people think and really be part of a team. And, um, and that kind of engagement is so important um, in terms of problem solving. It's a very um, rewarding thing to see all these kids uh, kind of paying homage to my grandfather in this way. Boiler up! 